Thank you for tuning into the Northern Miner recording at the AME's Roundup event in Vancouver. The mining industry is in constant need of replacing what it produces through making new discoveries. Here to tell me more about one such tech option that could help miners do just that is SRK Consulting's Findlay Fraser, a principal consultant, and Andrew Larish, a senior rock mechanics engineer. Thank you very much for joining me, gentlemen. All right, so we are here to talk about SRK's HiveMap product. Andrew, please tell us more, what is HiveMap? Yeah, so at its, at its basic kind of description, it's a geological mapping software, uh, both tablet and desktop based. You know, we took a conscious decision with that, uh, wanting people to be in the field, mapping on their tablets, being at the face, seeing those really important geological observations while also having uh, the flexibility to take that work back to the office and really fill in the work that they're doing. All right, so uh, where can HiveMac be used? Yes, so really kind of the, the broad range in the mining industry, whether that's operations, underground, open pit, early stage exploration, whether that's you know regional prospectivity work, uh, deposit scale work, but we also see uh, applicability as well in the civil engineering side of things as well. Really anywhere you have rock exposure that you want to map is, is really what it is. All right. Um, so, so what's the philosophy and the design principles behind this product, uh, Finley? So HiveMap was born out of an awareness of the, the changing nature of the mining industry. We were in a situation where we had both evolving expectations on what we would do and the tools that were available to us. At the core of any good geological study is, is observations of the rock. And for us, working across multiple deposit sites and environments, we were really struggling to bring together all of the data types and observations in one easy, easy, uh, usable space mm. and consume all of these new types of data that were available because there's been such an explosion in growth and uh, the availability of photogrammetry and LiDAR scanning and all of these things but there wasn't a response to that in terms of tools that would allow us to actually work with the data and map it geologically mm. and use it for engineering, use it for uh, structural geology studies. Mm. So really it, it was a response to the fact that there was no tool to, to uh, work with these new data sets and work with these changing expectations. So we made one. All right. Um, interesting stuff. So Andrew, uh, what are some of the key benefits that HiveMap brings to the table? Yeah, I think you know the starting point is it allows you to officially capture those geological observations in, you know, in a very efficient way. Um, and in many cases, you know, what we were seeing, I think this kind of comes to what Finley was saying, um, it leverages data sets that are oftentimes already being collected on a mine site, whether that's a survey group, tech services group, collecting it for other reasons. You know, that data is present and it's available, and so why not try to, to use it for mapping uh, purposes? Um, beyond just kind of pure uh, geological mapping, it also has quite a range of geotechnical tools as well to help take some of that primary mapping uh, data and support more geotechnical focus work downstream. Um, and probably one of the bigger things, you know, and I think this speaks to, you know, this came from SRK Consulting. We work with quite a range of clients. Um, and as a result of that, we took a decision as well that all the outputs from the software would be very flexible, very open, not tied to any sort of downstream modeling analysis packages, uh, which really allows the user to do what they want with it once they're done with that primary mapping work in HiveMap. Oh, all right, very interesting. So uh, how do you see HiveMap helping mining companies uh, improve the work they are doing? So I think the, the easy example that I always come back to is sort of uh, the production environment, grade control, you know, the kind of questions that you're trying to answer are, you know, where, where's the contact on my ore body? What are the metallurgical properties? And yeah, that varies obviously depending on commodity, but ultimately the question comes down to how well can we define our ore body for these very, very precise decisions that we need to make on mining. Mm -hmm. And if you look at you know, the uh, place where I started my career in iron ore, we're trying to map in very, very carefully where the edge of these uh, fairly you know, narrow, precisely defined um, ironstone beds are. And then we're also trying to very accurately locate these planes of weakness in the rock, which posed a fairly significant geotechnical risk. 
for me, going, when, I, when I started my career, I really wish it had this tool because what it allows us to do in that environment is to go out, work with the survey team to capture, like Andrew said, stuff that they would already be capturing, mm -hmm. usually scans of the rock face to do things like monitor bench performance. And I can go in, I can very carefully map in the boundaries of that ore body. I can capture those orientations. And I don't need to worry about where those scans are coming from. And when I'm going downstream, I don't need to worry about what it's going into mm -hmm. because it's designed to slot in to whatever is downstream and consume whatever is coming from above. So it gives a lot of flexibility um, to, to consume an output, but also to really rapidly uh, work with that data. So I can go into the pit, I can look at myself, say, all right, now I can see where things are. I'm not making this decision in a remote fashion but I'm capturing that observation really, really quickly. So the type of work that I did years ago um, for mapping, it was a three-day exercise that now with HiveMap we're able to do in three or four hours. Mm -hmm. Wow, so the key term that comes to mind is fully integrated. Yeah, that's a really good description of, of uh, the, the the pro of the thought process behind mm -hmm. it. All right, so we've said that uh, HiveMap works with disparate uh, information sources. Drilling down a little bit deeper, uh, Andrew, uh, what information does HiveMap work with? Yeah, kind of at the starting point, really, the comments, anything that uh, is meshed, um, whether that's collected you know, from LiDAR photogrammetry, whether that's terrestrial or drone-based, once that's meshed, it can be brought into HiveMap. From there, you can overlay imagery geophysics, whatever it is that you want to be visualizing on top of that meshed interface as well. You can bring hole in drill hole information um, to help validate some of the work you're looking at as well. Um, and you know, coming back to the fact that if it's meshed, it can be brought in. Any previous modeling work that's been done, geological modeling, structural modeling, that can be brought in um, and less to map from, but more to use to confirm the observations you're seeing in your pit exposure, underground exposure is matching previous modeling efforts or where tweaks need to be made in your models, for example. All right. um, and just you know, one, one point as well that we, where we're seeing it being used quite effectively um, is many of the Apple um, iPhone, iPad products have uh, LiDAR sensors built into them. So particularly in the underground environment, uh, people are using those to pr collect that primary data, what they're seeing at the face, and efficiently transfer it from iPhone into HiveMap and do the mapping in, in near real time underground. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really fascinating. And so uh, I would suppose um, HiveMap can also play a role in ensuring uh, improved safety and access concerns. Andrew, do you have any other f thoughts on that? Yeah, that, that, that's a big one. Um, and you know, you've seen the evolution of the industry over some time now um, where there is that aversion to risk and that consciousness about what people are being exposed to at the mine site. Um, and as a result of that, in many cases, being able to conventionally map, getting up to the face with your compass uh, to collect those observations um, is becoming a little bit more prohibitive from a risk standpoint. And so with, with HiveMap, um, having it on the tablet, having it on your desktop, whatever you prefer, uh, you can take that step back. You could still be at the working face, but not be exposed to those risks as you conventionally would be if you didn't have HiveMap, for example. Mm -hmm. All right. And so, uh, are, there, um, are, are there applications for HiveMap outside of operational mining environments? Uh, how does it, it, it work in the field? Um, do you have any case studies to share? Yeah, uh, I'm actually really glad, happy to say that uh, we've just managed to get the case study I'm going to discuss up on the website. So, um, if anybody wants to know more detail, um, mm -hmm. there's a whole bunch of images and a little bit more background that I'll be covering off here. But, um, we used HiveMap on the Goliath project in northern BC. Um, it's a relatively early stage exploration project and the topography is quite extreme. So you've got a very rugged plateau, it's very high, and that plateau is actually framed by cliffs on either side. So access to the, to the top, to the actual area that you can move about on foot, is by helicopter only. The structural geologist we had working on the project was looking at the cliffs, which were one and a half kilometers long and 700 meters high, and could see all of this incredible exposure, you know, giving almost like a, a, a 3D view, because on the top, 
they were able to see you know, where the, they were following the ore zone on the plateau, and they could see the ore zone coming down the cliff, they could see it interacting with folding, the other lithologies, but they couldn't map it because it's a cliff, it's inaccessible. So uh, we brought in a drone provider who did an exceptional job of capturing in, in detail the uh, exposure in the cliff uh, using photogrammetry. That was processed and then the entire cliff face was structurally mapped, giving us almost like a, a cross-section view directly into the deposit for exploration. So all of these observations, like I said, of the fold patterns, of the orientation of shear zones, that was all captured and then just brought straight into 3D to be worked with for the interpretation. And none of that would have been possible to, to map in a traditional manner. Right, yeah, that's a great segue um, into mapping, right? So uh, HiveMap uh, is a fundamental app to do mapping with. Um, uh, what does HiveMap bring to the table over other competing tools, Finley? So I, I think like the, the key thing is that mapping's fundamental to everything, right? And what we want, when we are looking at it and saying, well, what is it that we can't do with the tools that exist? There was a number of things, you know, we've talked about the flexibility and so forth. So there's not, you know, without touching on those, the other things that we really looked at were really high accuracy. The expectations within the mining industry are changing very rapidly. So if you go back 10, 15 years, being able to have a few measurements that were positioned down to within a few meters was pretty good and was, was, was you know, that, that was a, a very, high level of study. Nowadays, the expectation is that we're able to map almost all the features and we're able to position them down to the centimeter scale really, really accurately. And really, there isn't another tool that we have out there where we can go into the field and we can capture these things. We can really accurately position the data. We can really rapidly um, collect the observations and then bring it home and have that flexibility to work from the actual office. Fascinating stuff. Um, so who is HiveMap available to, Andrew? Yeah, so HiveMap you know, is available to any interested companies that you know, conventionally do geological mapping, want to be doing geological mapping um, as a commercial product. Um, but it's also available to the academic side of things as well. Um, and so for the academics, it's, it's a completely open software package. Really, we just want to build that integration with researchers, with the universities. Uh, we acknowledge a lot of the great work that you know, has driven HiveMap's development or other technological developments in mining comes through academics. Um, and so we want to empower them, give them the option to use the software and, and work with us to, to make it as powerful as it can be. All right, yeah. And then uh, looking into the future, what would you say uh, is some of the key development areas for HiveMap? What's next, Finley? So uh, really excited. We're coming up to the end of our second big development cycle. So we've got some really big things coming up on the horizon. So uh, the uh, tablet versions of HiveMap are going to be available for uh, Apple and uh, Android, Microsoft hardware um, within the next couple of months. So we're going to have that really seamless integration from the field all the way into the office. Um, we've got uh, uh, work that we're doing to improve the flexibility. So we're building out a template editor to make it much easier for users to be in control of like their own codes and implement exactly what they want in the software. And uh, we have also just put the updated manual on the website. So we've got uh, put a huge amount of effort into it. We've got. 146 pages of instructions and training data set that's available there. Um, so that's all work that we've done to try and make it a better user experience and a, a better uh, and more accessible software package. All right, very interesting. Uh, that was SRK Consulting's Finley Fraser and Andrew Lerich. Thank you very much for your time, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.